Hi again, thanks for joining us for this special TechSoup hosted online discussion for Accelerating Your Impact with DocuSign. I'm Aretha Simons, the webinar producer here at TechSoup. And by now, you probably sign your name electronically on a document at least once, you know, whether it's from school, buying a house or something. Today, we're gonna to learn more about how DocuSign can help your organization move away from the paper process and improve your operational efficiency. Before we do that, let's discuss how you can engage today. Currently, everyone is on mute. Um, please use the Q&A to ask your question. It's really best if you use the Q&A because you know the chat room just moves up so fast. So, but feel free to continue to ask your questions in the chat room. This will be recorded and you'll get the replay within 48 hours. Um, any links that we have, we'll share with them on the email to everyone who has registered. Feel free to forward that and share with your friends. If you learned something new today that you'd like, or you've learned something that, hey, I didn't know this about DocuSign, feel free to tweet at us at TechSoup, share it on Instagram, Facebook. If you need the closed caption, it is available. Turn on the CC button located at the bottom of your Zoom. So if this is your first time visiting TechSoup, welcome. As you know, TechSoup is a global network bridging promotional digital solutions and services for good. And one of our partners who helps TechSoup accomplish this by offering discount rates to TechSoup community members is DocuSign. So I'm excited today that I have two of DocuSign members here. We have Kathy Yamada. She's a partner alliance manager at DocuSign. DocuSign helps organizations connect and automate how they prepare, sign, act on and manage agreements. And Kathy works with nonprofit industry technology partners such as TechSoup to create an ecosystem that provides nonprofits the intelligent administrative tech stack they need to deliver a seamless user experience for their volunteers, their staff and donors alike. It also enables nonprofits to focus on what matters the most, which is their mission. And we also have with us today, Erica Smith, She's the digital marketing specialist on DocuSign's digital business team with more than four years of market experience between the consumer goods space and tech. Erica is a client relationship enthusiast. She plays an active role in the DocuSign tech support partnership, as well as an expert in the DocuSign impact global initiative. Kathy, thank you for being here today. I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you so much for the introduction there, Rita. And um, thank you for all our attendees here for joining us today. Uh, like Aretha mentioned, my name is Kathy Amada, and I'm here to tell you a little bit more about DocuSign for those of you that are a little bit um, less familiar with us. So a little bit background on DocuSign. Since our inception in 2003, DocuSign has been on a mission to accelerate business and simplify life for organizations and people around the world. Most of you may already know of us as the pioneering e-signature company, but we've evolved over the years. And today, DocuSign helps organizations connect and automate how they prepare, sign, act on, and manage agreements. As part of the DocuSign Agreement Cloud, DocuSign offers e-signature the number one way to sign electronically on practically any device, almost anywhere at any time. Our value is simple to understand. Legacy paper-based processes are manual, slow, expensive, and error prone. So we eliminate the paper, automate the process, and connect it all to the other systems that you're already using today. So today we'll be sharing more with you on how we help organizations like yours Every organization has a system of agreement, whether you know it or not. And next slide, please. I think you might have skipped one. There we go. So this is how you prepare, sign, act, and manage your agreements. Oh, I'm sorry, Rita. I think you might have slipped, skipped over a couple. Um, so from the creation of your agreements, the back and forth review and red line of those agreements, to printing them for signature, scanning, and sending them off to update other records and ultimately storing those documents and filing them away into the different systems that you have. 
Now, these manual processes usually require re-entering and rekeying of data, which creates errors and inefficiency, and of course, is very time consuming. Next slide. When an organization has these kinds of problems, the status quo has real costs. That includes hard dollar costs and productivity costs, which include paper overnighting like FedEx, and then staff time spent rekeying data. But there are other serious costs too, um, which includes turnaround time in measuring in days or weeks, basically slowing down the delivery of value and donor, staff, and volunteer experiences alike takes a hit. The agreement cloud is part of our journey of continuous innovation. You've been with us as we've become the world's number one e-signature provider. And this will always be at the core and heart of what we do. In fact, we have lots of innovations in this particular space to showcase in that area. But a natural progression and extension of that has been launching the agreement cloud to help modernize your entire system of agreement from prepare, sign, acting on, and managing and becoming the world's number one agreement cloud company. So through our suite of products, 350 plus integration points, which includes other technology partners like salesforce.org, which you're familiar with, and Flux Grants Management, um, our easy to access and use APIs, purpose-built industry solutions, we're able to help organizations like yours with your agreement process from beginning to end. Agreements are everywhere from front of office to back of office. And some of these documents and agreements you might already be familiar with like waiver forms for volunteers, um, grants applications as you see on there and vendor contracts. There's a multitude of different use cases, maybe some on there on the screen that you haven't thought of before but DocuSign can basically help you with any of these um, with your mission. So we've seen a demand in nonprofit programs grow this past year during the pandemic, especially. Um, we saw an increase in demand for different types of services all across the country. And digital agreements and virtual program delivery played a crucial part in running these programs. The DocuSign Nonprofit Agreement Cloud has helped organizations adapt to these new processes so that nonprofits can focus on what really matters, which is basically serving your stakeholders during these unprecedented times. DocuSign is also supporting nonprofit organizations by providing grants, donations, and um, volunteer labor to help organizations achieve their missions. So to tell us a little bit more about all this work is Erica. I'm Kathy. Hi, everyone. I'm Erica. I'm on the marketing team here at DocuSign. And I'll kick us off with a quick overview of the DocuSign. He's a global initiative. We're in creating more than a planet. Um, so in addition to Your time off and offering matching donations and volunteer hours. We've committed, um, sorry, but my internet is cutting out a little bit. Let me start over on this slide. Um, I am employees with three days of paid volunteer time off and offering over $3 million in grants to organizations fighting to protect the world's forests. On the product side, we've embedded our signature product. So providing our customers with an illustrative view of their savings of wood, waste, and water carbon emissions by using DocuSign e-signature basis is a paper-based process. So one of the ways we're executing on DocuSign impact mission is by providing discounted and donated e-signature licenses to small nonprofit organizations looking for an easier and more efficient way to serve their stakeholders. So through TechSoup, we offer two of our most popular web plans. Uh, that's our standard and business pro web plan. So if we hop to the next slide, I can give an overview of that. 
but basically any nonprofit with eligible for our TechSoup offer, which after paying the TechSoup set admin fee, you'll have the choice between a standard web plan for free or business for $99 a year. And that's over a 75% discount. So the difference between those two plans will come down to the features that are offered through each plan. And so you can see on the slide that I've bolded the premium features that are available in each plan. But both Standard and Business Pro will offer you all of the basics, which are the ability to send and sign documents for signature. You'll have access to basic fields, and basic fields include name, date, signature, title, company, email, anything along those lines. And then lastly, the basics include access to our mobile app so that you can send and sign documents on the go. In addition to the basics, our standard plan will offer you the ability to create templates. A template is basically a blueprint for repeatable envelopes. So rather than adding specific names and emails to the envelope, you'll just add placeholder recipients that you can customize before sending the template. And overall, this will just save you a ton of time on setup. So our standard plan will also give you the option uh, to set reminders and notification to help your envelopes get signed faster. You can add personalized branding to reflect your company. And you can also unlock access to our comments feature so that you can communicate with your signers in real time. So our business pro plan will offer you all of the basics and everything that I just described in our standard plan, but you'll also have access to a few of our most powerful features. Uh, one of those is payments, which will allow you to collect payments with your signatures at the same time. Um, additionally, Business Pro allows you to unlock more advanced fields. Another powerful feature of Business Pro is signer attachments, which allows you to request your recipients to upload an attachment as a part of the signing process. So an example of this could be a driver's license. And then lastly, Business Pro also offers you bulk send, so you can imp import a list of recipients and send a unique document and a unique email to each recipient. And then our PowerForms Power feature will allow you to publish your templates online and send customers a link to fill that document out at their leisure. So due to the success and the demand from TechSoup members, we decided to launch a solution for any nonprofit over $1 million in annual budget. So after paying your set admin fee, our TechSoup Advanced Solution offer offers a plan for over a 40% discount. Um, our TechSoup Advanced Solution offer includes everything that I mentioned in our Standard and Business Pro plan, but you'll also have access to our integrations, connectors, single sign-on, customizable usage uh, limits on the user level, and advanced enterprise level support, which means you'll get a dedicated account team and 24-hour support. So for those organizations using our Standard or Business Pro web accounts, we're excited to share a brand new support resource for you all. Uh, we pride ourselves on offering an intuitive and user-friendly product, but we also recognize that many small nonprofits are understaffed and under-resourced, and learning any new software platform can just be overwhelming. So the DocuSign Impact Corps connects you with your, your organization with a community of skilled and passionate DocuSign employees who want to help maximize the impact by moving those manual paper-based processes to the cloud. So whether you're just getting started with DocuSign eSignature or you're a more experienced user but needing a little bit more support to overcome a roadblock, our experts are here to help you. And signing up for the DocuSign Impact Corps is super easy. Head over to impactcorps.docusign.com and create an account. And I will uh, copy and paste that link into the chat box in case you missed it. But once we've reviewed and approved your application, you'll have access to search our database of DocuSign volunteers who are search based on the volunteer's location, the link unstable connection. Um, so apologies there. But uh, once we reviewed your you can refine There's some base volunteers, languages spoken, hobbies, interests, scientists. 
So once you've found a good match, you can request and schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting for an initial hour long um, consultation. And at the end of your session, you'll have an opportunity to submit feedback. Um, and you can also schedule a follow-up customer story where nonprofit partners always dream. They requested donated e-signature licenses to help manage the operations of their early childhood literacy program in Arizona, California, and Hawaii. So through an hour-long consultation with DocuSign Impact Court volunteers, Always Dream Foundation's Director of Programs got an overview of our standard account features, along with a walkthrough of how to set up a template for MOUs with partnering school districts. And they also learned how to organize and sync their files with Dropbox, which is Always Dreams Foundation's file storage of choice. So with that, I'll pass it back to Aretha. Thank you so much, Erica. You know, you never know with technology, but we'll make sure we get the slides to everyone so you'll be able to go back through the slides and um, pick some nuggets up from this. So next, I have um, two of my team members here from TechSoup. Today, we have Liz Forbes, she is a senior paper and culture journalist, and we have Jacob Chang. He is the associate general counsel here at TechSoup. I think, Liz, we're going to start with you. Great. Thanks, Rita. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I, uh, as Rita mentioned, my name is Liz Forbes. I work on TechSoup's people and culture team or HR team as a senior generalist. Our team adopted DocuSign in the beginning of 2018. At the time, I was the only administrator on an already small team of three, and I handled all of the paperwork for staff across our US team, and as well as some of Europe. Um, documents in general uh, take a long time to process, and uh, at TechSoup, that was you know, no different. Uh, if I needed a form signed, I would have to print it, chase after people for signatures, scan the form, process it online, file it away. And filing, I'm sure, as many, of, many people here can attest to, is just not a fun task. <laughs> uh, it usually ends up uh, a lower priority, and sometimes I find myself generally like overwhelmed by how much paperwork was on my desk. I would try cutting out some steps by having forms already printed, but anytime I made a change to a template or found an updated form, I had to uh, recycle the forms, uh, which, and I wasn't happy about how much paper was, was going to waste. Um, I had to also rely on people either being in the office or uh, at their computers or having a working printer so they could sign the forms. And if they weren't in the office, it just delayed a lot of our processes. Um, I would also come to my desk and find forms with signatures, but if there wasn't a printed name or I couldn't make out their signature, it was really hard to figure out if the form was even valid. Uh, signed forms would go to the wrong people. They would sit on a finance desk. There was just general confusion about where forms should go once they were signed. Um, new hires, they would receive an email with all of their hiring paperwork or their offer letters, but if they didn't have the technology to print and scan forms, then we had to wait until the first day to hire them into our systems and make their personnel files. And, you know, if they had messy handwriting, it took them a little longer because I had to ask them, like, what they, to tell me what they had written. Um, uh, now, and um, if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, so now we mainly use DocuSign in two ways. So we send envelopes and documents for signature, and we also host power forms on our intranet site. Uh, so it makes this process a lot easier um, one of the many types of documents that we send out, of course, are the new hire paperwork. We send out the offer letter, the application, all of the things that we need to actually hire the person in our systems. We no longer have to rely on new hires having a printer or a scanner. They can just sign and send their forms back within minutes. Um, and if something needs to be corrected, I can easily adjust the form without having to cross out mistakes or create messy forms. Um, having a neat e-signature package has been huge for our, our team's digital transformation. Uh, I also really like the DocuSign's PowerForm feature. So we're able to set up templates that staff can access without having to come to our team, which means that our team has more bandwidth to dedicate towards other initiatives. 
Um, if someone needs to make changes to their retirement accounts, request a pay advance, or sign our remote work agreements, they can go to our intranet, fill out a form, and it goes directly to someone on our team who can then process the change. Managers can also go through our staff change form and uh, they can input compensation or position changes. It goes directly to the pre-programmed people for signature and then it goes back to our team to process. So it's made everything just uh, a lot easier. And having a, a place where we can see all the power forms that, that are filled out helps us actually be able to process our payroll and makes everything a little bit faster. I have a checklist where I say, okay, let's check the change forms. So I go into DocuSign and I go through all the change forms that have been uh, filled out. And so everything is just where I need it to be. Um, additionally, I am really, uh, on, on those forms, I can lock in signatories. So if I know that a form always needs to have a certain person signing it, I can make sure that that person is programmed into the template. Um, so overall, we can send a lot of our forms um, safely and confidentially. We are still sending forms across the US, but it all, we're also sending them to staff in other countries. And DocuSign really helps us uh, fulfill that security requirement. So we can send contracts and offer letters. People can update their benefits and any sort of like agreements uh, can be processed uh, very like securely and easily. Um, it was such a relief to adopt DocuSign on our team. Uh, we're able to, uh, I think at this point, we're close to 600 forms completed. So that's definitely a lot of paper that is off of my desk, which I'm very grateful for. Um, so that is how our team currently uses DocuSign. I think Jacob is going to go into um, how his team uses it next. Thanks, Liz. So my name is Jacob Cheng. I am one of the uh, members of the legal team here at TechSoup Global. And TechSoup partners with civil society organizations around the world to deliver our programs to nonprofits. And these civil society organizations along with TechSoup are, we call ourselves the TechSoup Global Network. So when I joined TechSoup in 2011, one of my responsibilities was to manage the contracts between TechSoup and the partners in the TechSoup Global Network. And at that time, there were 15 members in the network. And for the contracts, the partner had to initial each page, sign two signature pages, then mail the signed contract to us. And then we would sign on our end and mail the fully signed contract back to them. And so getting the paper copies to some of our partners, especially in certain continents, um, could be quite a logistical challenge. So today, fast forward to today, we have over 60 partners in the TechSoup Global Network. We operate in almost every country in the world. So I am very thankful for DocuSign. I think as our programs have expanded, so have the number of signatures required and DocuSign allows us to really focus our resources on more substantive tasks rather than tracking down uh, contracts that get lost in the mail. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so just wanna give you an idea of uh, some of our other contracting partners. Um, one of TechSoup's main programs is the Tech Marketplace for nonprofits. Um, in that marketplace, we have over hundred tech companies, including DocuSign offering donated and discount products. Uh, in addition, TechSoup also offers a backend validation service to companies that want to offer products on their, their own site. Um, so they need to determine if nonprofits are legitimate charitable organizations, especially outside the US. So we offer a service, there's a, like 100 plus companies in that service as well. And finally, TechSoup works with contractors, consultants, vendors, and volunteers. Um, Liz mentioned some of those and sorry, I didn't spend time counting, but I think she said over 600 forms signed. So probably around that, <laughs> around there. All of these contracts are powered by DocuSign now. And so um, these corporate partners, companies and individuals are located throughout the world. And DocuSign has made our contract signing process so much easier um, and allows our legal team to remain small even while TechSoup expands the scope of its programs. And that translates into more funding and resources for our mission of providing technology uh, access for nonprofits worldwide. So personally, just want to say thank you to everyone at DocuSign for making my job easier, but also for supporting uh, nonprofits worldwide. 
I echo that, Jacob, because I've signed so many documents that to make my life easy. I didn't have to get in my car and drive anywhere and sign something or, or wait at an office to somebody to come out for me to sign. So DocuSign has definitely made a lot of people's lives easier. Um, so I'm going to go to the Q&A section. I know there were a lot of questions um, in the chat room. Um, please go to the Q&A section and type the form. Lots of compliments here. A lot of people saying that they've used DocuSign, so that's great. Um, I do want to uh, say that there was one I wanted to highlight. Um, they want to understand the volunteer consulting program. So if Kathy or Erica can answer that question, um, the volunteer consulting program, can you speak on that? You're, you're on mute if you are um, speaking. Okay, so um, Liz, you mentioned the power forms. Can you tell me about the power forms? Because that's new to me. I haven't heard of the power forms. So can you explain how that works? Sure. Uh, so basically in DocuSign, you can create a template. And from that template, you can select an option that says create power form. Once you select that option, you are provided with a link and you can send that link to whoever you like. It doesn't have to be hosted on an intranet, but it certainly is useful for that purpose. Uh, so you can send it out to whoever you need to, and it's the same form each time. Great, because that was part of the question somebody asked about the intranet, so that was great. So thank you so much. So um, Erica and Liz, I know you're typing in the chat room, so I wanna go to some of the questions. If you could answer this from Paul, what are the basic fields compared to advanced fields? I need a drop down field, if th is this available? Hi, I can speak to that. Um, I won't turn my video on as I know my internet's not uh, awesome today, but uh, so Paul is just typing you an answer, um, sending you a link to some of our standards, standard uh, fields and sort of what those are and giving a description. But as I sort of mentioned, um, those standard fields are things like your signature, initials, the date signed, email, company title, text, checkbox, uh, drop down radio, um, so there's a lot of different options and I'll send you a link to this user guide that we have. Um, and then second, so advanced fields, um, it's a little bit hard to explain, but this just sort of kind of allows you to customize your um, fields so you can add a little bit of logic behind your fields, um, whether that's like inputting data or um, allows you to specify uh, the, the signing order. Um, so those sorts of things. And I'll also put a link to a user guide um, that we have that ex explains our advanced fields a little bit more in depth, um, but you can put a little bit of logic behind those fields. And um, I know there, sorry, that there is a, a question about um, the volunteer program. And I think I probably cut out during this, um, that part of the presentation, but just as a brief overview of that. Um, so this is something that you can sign up for. Um, again, I'll put the link in the chat box. I, I put it in once already, but once you've created an account, we can review and approve your application and you'll have access to our database where we have DocuSign volunteers. So you can refine your search uh, based on the volunteer's location, the languages, any uh, shared interests and hobby, or just their general uh, DocuSign area of expertise. And then once you've found a good match, you can request and schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting for an hour-long consultation where you can just meet with this uh, volunteer and talk through any issues that you have or just get a general account overview. And then at the end of your session, you can submit feedback and you can also follow um, schedule a follow-up meeting if needed. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And Carol in the chat room, and it's very similar to um, Alice's question here in the Q&A, can you briefly describe how DocuSign integrates with Google and others? And like I said, it's sort of similar to Alice's question, can we create Google Forms and do the same thing for free? <laughs> what makes it better? Now, these are two different questions, so forgive me. Hold on. Let's answer Carol's question first. DocuSign integrate with Google. Google Forms, I'm sure that's what she meant. Erica or Kathy? Yeah, I'm not sure if you can speak to this more, Kathy, but um, this is would be a part of our advanced solution where we have integrations and Google is one of those. Um, so I'm not sure if you have any more details, Kathy. Um, not 
so much in particular with Google, but like, for example, um, Flux um, grants making, um, you're able to be within Flux's solution and then from there create documents and with a single button, you can send it off for signature and it um, comes back to you and, and it's stored within Flux. Um, so it routes to all the different signers that need to sign it. As kind of same thing for Salesforce. Um, with these are just all the integrated solutions um, where you don't have to leave the other system in order to be able to send out a document. Oh, Arita, you're muted. Thank you. I believe one of you mentioned that you can create forms and templates in DocuSign, is that correct? Yes, you can create it within DocuSign um, and you can also create it within the other systems that we're integrated with as well. Great, I heard something that really surprised me. You can take payments through DocuSign? Yes, we have multiple payment gateways that we are integrated with. So um, definitely a great feature that's very heavily used with a lot of our nonprofit customers. Great, wow. That was, so it does it integrate with your bank or is it PayPal? We have a couple of different payment gateways. Um, Stripe is one of them. And um, Erica, do you know the other ones that we are integrated with as well? Not completely sure, but my understanding is uh, there's just that ability to input, um, have those fields where it, it asks for customers, you know, information so that as they're, you're signing, you can also in, insert your, your credit card information as well. Um, less familiar with the gateways so. though. That is great though to know, cause I, did, I didn't know that you could do that cause I used DocuSign myself. So this is great. So I know there are questions about um, nonprofits with a small budget and that's been answered um, by a TechSoup team. Is there any part for free that we can use for a discount someone asked? So Maria put the link in here. Uh, I know we, um, yeah, always want, to use some free products, but I think you allow, um, they allow, when you first sign up for DocuSign, they allowed you to use it to use for free five, five, five documents. Is that correct? I believe that's how it was when I signed up. You can use five documents or get five documents signed. Yeah, our free account will, um, you can sign as many documents as you'd like, but you'll have uh, three lifetime sends. Okay, this is a great question. And you know, it's it, it may sound common sense to someone, but this is a great question. Can I implement DocuSign on my own or do we need a DocuSign consultant? This is from Tamara. You can absolutely uh, implement DocuSign on your own. We just offer these, you know, volunteer programs and support in case you're having any issues, roadblocks. Um, as I mentioned in the presentation, sometimes it just can be a little difficult to get up and running, but um, you definitely can uh, just poke around in the product yourself and um, self-serve. Okay. We want to know, are there any links to how-to videos? Um, she thought we would talk more about a how-to video because she already has DocuSign. Yeah, absolutely. I have some links that I can drop in the chat. Um, we also have some webinar series, um, one called DocuSign 101 that you can sign up for. So I can drop some resources in um, so that you can definitely check out our, our videos on how to send and sign and do some of these um, actual action items. Great, thank you so much. And I'm sure, you know, the nonprofits here are probably curious about signing up volunteers and you know, doing things like that. So this will, this will be great if you, when you share the links and all the links that we share, I will share them in the email, remind you that this is being recorded and in about 48 hours, you'll get the recording with the links to all the um, posts that we're posting here in the chat room. Thank you, Maria, for the Dr. Sign 101 webinar. So there it is, you can sign up for that. Great, thank you so much. So are, are there any other questions to our panelists? Feel free to type them in the Q&A section.
I have a question then. Okay, great. Um, I have a question. So DocuSign, how long has DocuSign been around? Because I know I've probably been using it just for a couple of years. It's been around more than five years. Is that right? I want to ask in the Q and A's in the in the chat room. How many of you already use DocuSign? Put a number one in the chat room if you already use DocuSign. Put a number one in the chat room. Renee, Di, and she's way in South Africa. Good, Ingrid, great. Arnold, Vince, great. Hi, Zita, great. This is fantastic. So a lot of you are already using DocuSign. This is great. I'd love to actually hear from some of our attendees what kind of use cases you're utilizing us for. That's a good one. Yeah, let us know in the chat room how are you using DocuSign. Um, Ingrid said, can an organization with less than $1 million budget sign up for advanced solution? We're interested in integrating with Google. That might be an Aaron question. And Zita said she's using um, DocuSign for legal documents. Oh, thank you for joining us, Shana. She's answering that question. Um, Cynthia says she's using human resources and home buyer services. Great. So far, we've used um, DocuSign to sign contracts. This is from Arnold. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Ben said to get signatures on board of directors, documents, and contracts. Fantastic. You're using it for your nonprofit. It's fantastic. Oh, Megan, thank you for posting that link, DocuSign University. I did not know. Learning all kinds of new things today. Ingrid says she's using it to sign new contracts and facilities. This is great. Mostly grant agreements. Oh, Renee, very good. Very important to get those grant agreements. Very good. And Margaret said homeowners will sign contracts for our nonprofit to repair and paint their houses. Oh, that is fantastic. Who would have thought? That is wonderful. Keisha, we're launching a scholarship fund soon. We are looking to utilize DocuSign for the recipients to sign agreements. Very good. Thank you, Barbara. DocuSign was founded in 2003. Wow, and it's 2021 and I just started using it. Ooh, I've been behind, right? So that lets you know how long technology has been around and some of us are still just finding out about it. So this is, this is, you know, we're in the technology world, we're always going to be using the internet. It's something that everybody in the world uses now because all of us have our cell phones. So DocuSign, thank you for allowing us to do this seamlessly by signing documents. Great. Thank you all for putting links in the documents and excuse me, in the chat room. See how documents are stuck in my head now. Okay, Ben in the chat room, he says, hi, can a single generic DocuSign email account be shared by multiple staff? i.e. an HR company used by several HR staff for handling all electronic forms for licensing, can businesses or, doc, or organizations use standard license or should they only use a pro or advance? Great. Um, Shanti is answering that question in the chat room, but I wanted to see, um, but I'm gonna go back to um, uh, Seagulls, Question, he said, is there an additional charge for implementation support service after the first hour? And um, Shana, I'm sorry, I've been calling you Shanti, I apologize. For the document impact for engagements are typically up to three hours total and you can be a combination of implementation or other product support. So that's the answer to that for those of you who may have missed that in the chat room. And, um, Edgar asks, is it an annual license per user? That is a great question. Is it an annual license per user? I think probably um, both the TechSoup team and DocuSign can answer that. Yes, so these are annual licenses. Um, Kathy is typing an answer, so um, I'm sure you'll see that pop up soon. But yes, an annual licenses for both our, our standard and business pro products. 
Okay, and Cynthia wanted to know, can you have individual folders with passwords or something like that? I'm not sure. Individual folders. Maybe, maybe for the, the signees, is that what you meant, Cynthia? When you have like different clients and they sign documents? Let us know in the chat room if, if that's what you meant. That would be great. There are some privacy features that you can add to accounts. Um, this sometimes does require a bit more of an advanced solution though. Um, so that's something that um, would probably be an advanced solution feature. Okay, she said for HR, so maybe Liz can answer how, how do you manage when you have um, signatures for different um, new hirees or something like that, Liz? Definitely use the, we do have folders in our DocuSign account. We have different templates that we host in each, like we might host onboarding documents in one or contractor files in another. Uh, additionally, once you have um, completed a form, you can move it to a folder uh, and keep track of things that way. So if I have a folder for like employee change forms, I can click into that and anything that's been tagged uh, into that folder will show up there. But because it's just me and, uh, and my team using the account, we don't have passwords on our folders. Mm, okay, great. Um, Ingrid, how many users is one license good for? I think anybody can answer this question. Anybody from TechSoup or DocuSign? I think everybody's on mute. It looks like Kathy's typing an answer in, in the chat. For that one. She's typing I, I one know. for how many users per license. And then the second question was, how many users is one license good for? Let me go back to this question. I want to make sure everybody gets this. Great. And feel free to continue typing your questions in the chat room. This is being recorded. I want to remind you, you'll get this within 48 hours. Um, lots of good questions here, lots of comments. So I know you want to take some of this feedback to your board of directors. Um, when um, Sego asks for how many users, um, advanced solution is an annual license based on the number of transactions. Okay. Emma says LastPass might be good for storing passwords. I think there's some, some advice to everyone. Nima says, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Nia, can the host of this account turn, turn on the closed caption transcript feature? Oh, I thought it was already turned on. Yes. I will assign it to you, absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the Q and A. Um, if we have five employees, will we pay the $99 um, five per user for the pro for the business pro? Um, feel free to answer these questions out loud as well. For the sake of time, anyone can jump in and answer that question. Hey, Aretha, I can answer Edgar's um, questions um, regarding how many users for advanced solutions. So the way the advanced solutions works is um, it's based on the number of transactions that are needed. So it's customizable, which means you get the pool of transactions and it can be divided amongst however many users you'd like. So if you have um, two employees that or volunteers that need to use it versus like 20, it doesn't matter to us. It's just the pool of transactions. So that is one of the big benefits of the advanced solutions. Great, thank you so much. Great. And I can speak to Standard and Business Pro as well. Um, so our Standard and Business Pro plans do allow for multiple users on one account, um, but you will, the, the, the discount is only applicable for one user. So if you do want more users, you will have to um, pay for that as well. Um, and then you can, I know there was a question about using a generic um, 
like HR email, that is something that is possible, but it, it is a little difficult when signing um, because it will be linked to like one name or one person's name um, that is on the account. So if you're se sending out something for signature, it will come from that HR email. But if you are signing something, um, then it is just kind of that generic, whatever is linked to your account. So if you do um, have certain people within your org that need to sign things separately, then you'll, you will need multiple users on that account. So I know that's a little confusing, but let me know if you have any follow-up questions. Great, thank you so much. Okay, Are there any other questions? Um, if not, then we'll give you your time back as we say here at TechSoup. I wanna thank everybody for being here. I wanna thank everybody in the background, Shana, Maria, and Aaron. Thank you to our panelists today. Um, and also Barbara in the background, uh, Kathy, Erica, and Jacob. And Liz, um, let us know as you're checking out, uh, we're gonna put a link to the chat, excuse me, to the survey. Let us know one takeaway that you got today. Lots of thank yous, um, please. Yes, thank you to our host. Thank you to our host, our panelists and um, the people in the background. Let us know one takeaway, one thing you learned today. I know that I learned that you can take payments now. That was great. This will be available. Yes, we will we will send everything to you via email. Thank you. We're going to put the survey. Please fill out our survey. Um, another question coming in from Paul as you're saying your thank yous. How many transactions are included in the standard account? Feel free to answer that live. Thank you so much, everybody. So as far as usage for annual plans, um, we do have for Standard and Business Pro, those annual plans include an allowance of, of up to 100 envelopes sent per year. Um, so that um, will be your allowance and you're not tied to any monthly uh, restrictions. Great, thank you so much. Edgar said, I learned about licensing details and how the volunteer to program and how to set up DocuSign, great. The Seed of Life is amazing how this program has made everything easy. Yes, I agree. I agree. Thank you. Please explain what an envelope is. Um, Liz, if you could do that or someone else who knows about the envelopes. There was a question about envelopes earlier. Um, yeah. I can take that one. Um, so basically, you could think about envelope or a transaction as like a FedEx envelope. You can put as many documents as you want into it, as many signatories that need to sign that document through the process flow. Um, once you hit send, that's considered one transaction or one envelope used. Oh, okay. So when you sign up for the free or the trial version and you get free, five free documents, mm -hmm. that's one envelope. Is that right? Am I saying it right? Correct, so it's five five envelopes, yes. Okay, awesome, awesome. So is there a minimum number of transactions? This is from Ingrid. No minimum. Um, actually, I would say for the advanced solution, um, the minimum would be um, at least 500 trans transactions. Okay, awesome. This has been great, awesome. So there's a direct link here in the chat room for the DocuSign Impact Core um, for up to three hours of pro bono product support. Yes, somebody was asking for something free earlier. There you go. Please copy that link and we'll also share the link um, when we send out the emails. Um, thank you so much. Um, Ingrid said she was asking. Good, Kathy, you're answering that. Yes, please fill out the survey and thank you so much um, for joining us again. Thank our panelists for being here today. And I'm gonna let you go, have your time back. I always tell all of our nonprofits as you're busy taking care of everybody else, make sure you take time, time to take care of yourself. Thank you for being here with us today, everybody. Bye-bye.